Now as for Wilder and Fury, we've heard a few conspiracies of our own. So in this video, I will be listing the top three conspiracies and covering reasonable explanations for each. Black Two Sugars. Hi, this is Joe Cortez. You're watching Showbiz The Adult. Oh, this is Bernard Hopkins, Showbiz The Adult. I'm out. Oops! Up off net! <laughs> Up off net! What's up, my people? This is Showbiz The Adult. Alright, man, look. So, the top three conspiracies explain. How did Tyson the Gypsy King Fury defeat Deontay the Bronze Bomber Wilder? Oops! Hi, right, man! Look! Let's get to the video. First, I want to say this. Uh, today will be uh, my 4th of July video. Um, I will be taking 4th of July off, which is actually tomorrow. Uh, it is the United States. A celebration of her independence. So I will be celebrating that with the family uh, taking that day off. So today is our 4th of July video, which is very relevant to today's topic. Today marks the 110 year anniversary of the fight of the century, Jim Jeffries versus Jack Johnson. Now, very much like the Deontay Wilder versus Tyson Fury fight, the fight of the century had a racial undertone, to say the least. Generally speaking, if you were white, you were rooting for Jim Jeffries, who was deemed as the true heavyweight champion. And if you were black, you were rooting for Jack Johnson. Now, with Fury and Wilder, the racial undertones inspired Deontay Wilder to say, to this day, now, the racial undertone and the fact that it was a heavyweight bout isn't the only thing that makes the fight of the century and Fury vs. Wilder similar. Both outcomes were followed by conspiracies. That's right. After Jack Johnson KO'd Jim Jeffries, you begin to hear excuses and conspiracies for Jim Jeffries. Everything from Jim Jeffries having a nervous breakdown to him being doped before the fight. Now as for Wilder and Fury, we've heard a few conspiracies of our own. So in this video, I will be listing the top three conspiracies and covering reasonable explanations for each. Black Two Sugars. <sighs> Conspiracy number one, Glove Gate. Now, in the first fight with Tyson Fury versus Deontay Wilder, Tyson Fury had what it appeared to be a loose glove or a flopping glove that was giving a strange effect with his punching motions. Now, the conspiracy is that Tyson the Gypsy King Fury slid his fist down into the wrist of the glove, which is why the glove was able to bend that way. Now, here's my explanations. First explanation, we must debunk the conspiracy that his fist was in the wrist of the glove. In order to do that, you cannot use one of these gloves to demonstrate it, okay? This is not an official glove. Neither can you use a glove like this, okay? This is also not an official glove. It has the strings, yes, but it's just not official. Let me show you what, that, what an official glove looks like. An official glove looks like this, okay? And the strings are thicker and it's just more higher quality and it just looks official. Now, I've demonstrated this before and I'm going to do it again. What you notice about Tyson Fury when it comes to Glove Gate Part 1 is that you can see his flesh in the space above the strings of the glove. So naturally, if his fist were in the wrist of the glove, it'd be too low to still see the space here. The fist would have to be higher in the glove, at least here, to see the flesh in the space. So once again, it cannot be this low, though it can bend back with it being this low. 
you still see a space here. In order, in order to fill the space with your flesh, your hand has to be higher up. But when doing that, you can't have that effect of the fist bending because there's no joint here in the middle of your hand. So your hand can't fold that way. It's actually stopping uh, that effect from occurring. So in order for that effect to occur, Tyson Gypsy King Fury has to have his fist this low, causing it to bend, which he couldn't have had his fist this low and feel the space with his flesh. Or it would have to be all the way in the glove so it could bend at the wrist point. But still, the question remains, why did the glove bend that way in that strange effect? Have we ever seen that before? My explanation has always been that he flicks and slaps his punches. And yes, we've seen this before. Now, when I debunked it the first time, I used footage from Muhammad Ali and Larry Holmes. But the response to that was, well, that was a long time ago. Gloves are made from a different fabric now. So I decided to use a more current example. Now, if you look at Canelo Alvarez versus Amir Khan, Canelo, to counter Amir Khan's speed, he started to flick his jab. See Amir Khan being a smaller fighter with quick legs and good head movement and great reflexes. It was becoming difficult for Canelo Alvarez to land a more piston type of jab where he just shoot the jab straight forward. So he started to flick his jab to blind Amir Khan, and you can see it here. Now look at the way his wrist bends. That is because he is flicking his jab, keeping his hands extremely loose. Now the follow-up question naturally would be, well, how about the hooks from Tyson the Gypsy King Fury? Well, when you look at Canelo Alvarez versus Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., he was slapping with his hook against Chavez so he can bother Chavez, open him up to land his right hand. Why? Chavez was keeping his guard extremely tight and extremely high. So Canelo began to implement the slapping tactic. And here you see the way his wrist bends when he's slapping his hook. So the point I'm making is this. We've seen it before and it's more of a tactic which is why I see this comparable to Canelo Alvarez flicking his jab and slapping his hooks, making this more of a tactic and maybe a slight malfunction than a conspiracy. Now, conspiracy number two, Glove Gate part two. Now, over the past couple of days, this picture has surfaced where it appears that you can see Tyson the Gypsy King Fury's knuckles and his fingers through the glove. Now here's the conspiracy. The conspiracy is that Tyson the Gypsy King Fury in the back room with help of his team removed the cushion of the glove and replaced it with metal parts, giving the glove a more pancake effect. Now here are my explanations. Now earlier this week, Mauricio Suleiman, CEO of the WBC, released a statement saying that this conspiracy is ridiculous. That he, along with Deontay the Bronze Bomber Wilder's team and the commission were in the locker room when Tyson the Gypsy King Fury was getting his hands wrapped. He said everyone were focused, competent, and had no issues. Here is video of Team Wilder, Jay Diaz, with an extreme amount of concentration, watching Tyson Gypsy King Fury get his hands wrapped and his gloves put on. Now, neither fighter is allowed to have access to their gloves before this point. They're allowed to choose their gloves, and after that, the gloves are put away and kept safe by the commission. Now, once the gloves are put on and taped on, there's a signature there. It is signed saying that the gloves were put on properly. These gloves are legal and they can't be removed because if so, the signature would be broken by the removed tape. But still, that doesn't explain this photo. And quite frankly, when I looked at the photo, I was pretty duped myself. And I attempted to give an explanation for why the gloves look that way the first time I tried to debunk it. I said a photo must have been doctored 
or photoshopped. Now after looking at it further and doing my research, I must say I was capping. The photo is official. I reached out to the photographer and didn't get much of a response. The only response we all got was he took the website down. Then once the website was made public again, those photos weren't there anymore. But luckily I saved the photo and I showed it to another professional photographer who will remain nameless. She said that she did not want to be associated with these conspiracies. I asked her for her professional insight. She told me that it doesn't look like the photos were doctored and you can actually get that effect after landing a punch on someone. And actually the effect makes a bit of sense. She was speaking on the frame rate and the shutter time. I told her when looking at the fight live, you don't see the glove having this effect. And she said you wouldn't because the frame rate of a camera and if you increase the shutter time high enough, you can actually just see things that your eyes can't, just like these photos here. You usually don't see each bead of sweat when watching a fight live. So I said, that makes sense. So can a boxing glove actually do that if it has all of this cushion in a boxing glove? I decided to look up photos of some of your harder punchers and I looked up Triple G and immediately I saw this what appears to be his knuckles and his fingers protruding through the glove. Now we know those aren't actually his knuckles. You have the galls and the wraps protecting your knuckles. But just like Tyson the Gypsy King Fury's glove, you can see the knuckle portion of the glove. And you can actually see the indentations of each finger. Even in this photo from Canelo Alvarez, you can see his entire index finger protruding through his glove. That's because with the high frame rate, you can see the distortion of the glove immediately after impact. So my explanations are this. The gloves were properly and officially put on and approved by Team Wilder, the WBC, the Commission, Team Fury, and Kenny Bayless, the referee. Now, conspiracy number three, Deontay the Bronze Bomber Wilder's dented skull. Now, the conspiracy is this. When looking at this video, it seems as though Deontay the Bronze Bomber Wilder has a dent in his skull. And that dent was put there by Tyson the Gypsy King Fury, which proves that Tyson the Gypsy King Fury had tampered gloves with metal objects in the glove. Though no doctors has released this information, there are claims that a doctor said that Deontay Wilder has a dent in his skull and the only thing that can be responsible for that is impact from a metal object. But since we have no statements provided by the actual doctor, here's my explanation. What you see here in this video isn't a dented skull. It's a protrusion, an inflammation of the arteries. Now, an inflammation like that is usually seen when there is a head injury. I decided to look up photos of one of our falling warriors. Rest in peace to you, Mad Max Dadashev. Here, you can see a similar protrusion, inflammation right around the temple area. Where one can look at it and think that it's a dent is actually inflammation of the arteries. Though I don't think Deontay the Bronze Bomber Wilder has a dented skull. I do think Deontay Wilder was beginning to suffer head damage that can possibly be severe, which should bring greater insight and awareness on why the fight was stopped by his corner. Deontay Wilder was beginning to suffer the type of head damage and injuries that no fighter should endure. And though Deontay the Bronze Bomber Wilder feels that he should have been allowed to go out on his shield, it is partially the responsibility of Team Wilder to make sure Deontay the Bronze Bomber Wilder is safe after the fight. So in doing my research on why his head looks like that, I ultimately became even more convinced that the fight was rightfully stopped. So in conclusion, I want to say this. To go back to the fight of the century, Jim Jeffries versus Jack Johnson, when all of the excuses and the conspiracies began to surface. Five days later, on July 9th, 
Jim Jeffries released a statement. He said there were no doping. He said he didn't have a nervous breakdown. What he said was he just couldn't get started that fight. He said that Jack Johnson was just better than him and he just got old. It was Jim Jeffries himself who shut down the conspiracies. Now as for Deontay the Bronze Bomber Wilder, should he shut down the conspiracies? Eh, he can, but maybe he shouldn't. The conspiracies leading up to the trilogy and the racial undertones seems to be promoting the fight very well. If Deontay Wilder were to shut down the conspiracies now and say that Tyson the Gypsy King Fury TKO'd him fair and square the second fight, Quite frankly, I'm not sure how many people would be interested in a trilogy. I think it behooves Deontay Wilder to not say anything at all, to not shut down the conspiracies and wait until after their third and final fight. Now, those are my top three conspiracies and explanations. Please like, subscribe and share. And if you are American, have a safe, safe Independence Day. Showbiz, little don't.